to heal you, he has to snatch the band-aid off the wound to expose it to us. Nurses know this is true. Sometimes the only way some wounds heal, you have to snatch it off and let the air be exposed to it. The new one, you have to allow the Spirit of God to be exposed to it in order for it to be healed. God is at the point of your pain. He's at the point of your disappointment. He's at the point of your failures. He's there, but unless you yield that to him, he will not access that place and will not bless you in that place. If you want unlimited blessings, you have to allow unlimited access. You can go there, Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. And I know you're singing that song, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me, except for don't go in this room here. Just, just stay right here. Don't, don't, don't go in the fringes, Lord. Don't go into this room or that room. I want you to stay in the center where everybody can see me. But there's some rooms that God needs to open the door, not just open the door, but tear down the door in so that he can tear down those walls and include that into the total room. God sees that place you're in, but he ain't going to take no action unless you allow him to heal you in that place. And allow him to heal you in the place you have to give him unlimited access. Where a lot of people in the church fail, and I know this is true among, among clergy and those aspiring to be in clergy, is they get ahead of God. They get ahead of God. We have to wait for God's initiation, then adjust after his initiation. Huh? Prophecy came forward, you want to be an apostle. On September the 1st, 2016. September the 2nd, you already ordered your apostolic garment. And you were at the church on that Sunday. Well, so-and-so said I was going to be an apostle. He said you were going to be an apostle. Did he say you were one now? Huh? My God, my God. See, we got to do everything in God's time. We have to understand God is the author of time. Yes. Part of trusting God is believing he is the creator of all things. Therefore, he's in sole control. He's the inventor of time. You become an unauthorized manufacturer of time when you attempt to fix things before God fixes them. You're not the creator. Time only exists because God created it. So you must trust the fact that he knows how to manage it perfectly. God makes no mistakes. None. He doesn't make mistakes. It's impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for God to fail. God has never made a mistake, nor will he ever make a mistake. Everything that the Lord does, he does it with a specific purpose. Further, there are some things that God doesn't do, but for a specific purpose, he permits certain things to happen. God knows more than you do. I know you're smart. I know you showed up on the dean's list. I know that, right? I know that you are so intelligent that it hurts you. But guess what? God knows more than you know. Huh? How can he be supreme over everything if he doesn't know everything? Huh? God possesses the ability to know all things. God has total knowledge. He owns the quality of knowledge, knowing everything. You have to trust in God's omnipotence. You got to trust him that he knows all things. There are some things that God knows about you that you haven't discovered yourself because God is able to look inside of the nut and see the grooves that he has put inside of you. But see, if you don't know the grooves that are inside of you, you don't know that you can fit on the boat. Those grooves are inside of you. They're perfect for the boat. Perfect for the boat. Perfect. But you don't know the inside of you because you just looking at that. Not only you don't know what's inside of you, your friends don't know what's inside of you. Because they're looking at just this. Huh? They're looking at the outside. Huh? Oftentimes we feel like we're ready for certain things, but we're not. We're not. We're not ready for everything that God. I thank God he never told me everything. I thank God because I know I would have messed it up. My God, ain't no way I could have conceived and not messed something up. God knows if he releases everything to you right now, 
There's greatness inside you, but people let you know right now what it is that he's going to do through you, everything he's going to do through you, then it's going to blow your head up. Your head is going to be as big as this building. Huh? We're going to have to push a button and put a garage door at the back so you can walk in and out. Hmm? I thank God that he doesn't tell me everything, nor does he tell you everything that he is going to do. Because you might just lose your mind. You might just lose your rabbit mind. I'm just saying. I was listening to some parts of the sermon from Apostle Tony on last week. And two phrases jumped out to me pertaining to how we need to adjust for God. We got to have a hunger for the things of God. Yes. Or oh, we have a hunger for Gucci, Theo Rucci, Dooney Burks. Oh, we have a hunger for Cadillac, Mercedes, BMW. We have a hunger for, for Hummer. We have a hunger for uh, Yves Saint, Yves Saint Laurent or whatever the name is. We have a hunger for the worldly things. But what about the things of God? Where are our, where's our hunger for the things of God? There used to be a time where there was no problem with people coming to the church on time for prayer. There used to be a lot of time where people, they, they had not a problem staying all night in prayer. But see, it's, it's funny, right? It's funny how the world is. If we take this as the world system and the pressure that's contained within this, right? As long as the world system is tight on you, tough on you, then, then you all up in the house of God. You all up in the Lord. Like, oh Lord, take this pressure off. Take it just like the children of Israel. Take the pressure off me, Lord. Take the pressure off. He ease up just a little bit and you start slipping away. He ease up just a little bit. You, you get yourself a job making any kind of money, and then you forget about God. When, when, when things were rough, when things were tough on you, you tied it more than you do now. I'm just saying. But the moment God lets a little pressure off you, you forget about God. Huh? You forget, and you, and you make the adjustment in the wrong direction. You got to learn to hold on tighter to God when things are good. Huh? And hold on even tighter when things are not so good. Huh? My God, my God. If, if, if you would just hold on tighter to Him when things are good, the things are not so good when seem so rough. My God. He also said we got to have a hunger for the truth. A hunger, for, a hunger for the truth. That's such a simple thing. The truth. My God. You got to be hungry for the truth of things. You got to be hungry for the Holy Spirit. Don't just be hungry for the celebration of things. Be hungry for the truth so that your celebration will be even greater. Yes. When we don't have a hunger for things, we're so easily led away from good, solid, foundational things. We crave to know the world. Hmm? And we should crave to know the world. We should crave to get closer to the Lord, especially this time that we're in now. Y'all just don't know how close we are to the rapture. You just don't know there's a great falling away at the church. We, we're so close to the rapture. Everything that God said would happen was happening as a sign unto us. Telling people on the other day at the funeral, I say, you know, no man knows the day or the hour, but Jesus himself, he said that. But he also said that we'll know the season. Look around. You don't know the day or the hour, but look at the season that we're in. My God. We're in a season where the rapture could happen any time. Huh? But when we desire, when we des desire things of God, we desire to love the Lord. We desire just to get closer to him. When we desire that, we'll find ourselves panicking for more. And the songs chasing after you becomes a, a stable song, becomes your theme song. Then you know you've made the adjustment that God wants you to make. Many of us are hungry for a change. Your hunger for a change is obvious. You come up here and you come into this place where this man is not hooping and hollering. He's trying to teach you. Huh? You're hungry for a change. Some from backgrounds, you came from backgrounds where it's tradition, 
had taken root and tradition was worship above the truth. But you come in here showing that you want to make an adjustment. This preacher here, I don't mind. You be like, I, this preacher here, he don't act like what I'm used to. That's all right. I'm not what you used to. I was cut from a different cloth. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those people that, that, that get the hoop on. I'm not. Because I really want you to know the word. I want you to know, I want you to know so that you can apply this word to your life. Huh? Come in here is definitely a flat out adjustment. Stand on your feet, y'all. I got about four more pages of notes, but I'm going to. And the words of my friend, Pastor Moore, I ain't going to quit. I'm just going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right here. Beloved, you have to understand my thing. You cannot get discouraged by what you may see around you. When you make an adjustment for God, it's going to sometimes cause a great fall in the way. You're not going to see the people that you used to see. Huh? And people seem to want to fight you even more when you're making a great adjustment for God. Huh? Don't want to cooperate, don't want to, don't want to do anything that you're asking them to do. Huh? But when God invites you and he initiates his plan in you, there's absolutely nothing that anybody can do to stop it. So don't be discouraged. I know that at times our lives are indirectly affected by the deeds of others. I, I, let me be honest. Let me. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not talking about anybody. And I'm just gonna say that was that was a person who came here that was not happy about us doing moments in Black history. Now, I know he's your friend on Facebook and everything. I know that they are. They weren't happy about us doing moments in Black history. But tell me, how in the world can our children know that there's a place they can lunch from? They didn't think we accomplished anything. That's not prejudice. That's just truth. It has to come out. We have to let it come out. And as you know, all of you know that there, there are plenty of things where I know a lot of people be talking about past safety, just past safety. I know, I know, I don't care. It don't bother me. Because I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do what's right. I know, I know that the, 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 my mouth, my name is in a lot of people's mouth about some dumb stuff that they think I was a part of. Or they talk, I don't care. I just have to tell what is true. I have to tell what is true. And there was no way that we would go forward. And I thank God that happened the way it happened. There was no way that we would go forward without doing something that commemorated Black History Month in this ministry. I wasn't going to let it happen. It just wasn't going to happen. Amen? Amen. It wasn't going to happen. I wasn't going to allow someone to, to control the ministry or control, control your pastor in a way that would cause him to compromise everything that God has in him. It just ain't going to happen because we have contributed so much. And that's not prejudice. That's love. If we can celebrate George Washington, why can't we celebrate Dr. King? Huh? If we can celebrate Christopher Columbus, why can't we celebrate uh, the, the true man who was the Long Ranger? Why? Why can't we? It is truth. And unless you know where you came from, you don't know where you're going. It really is true. Because if people would really understand the origin of certain things, they wouldn't do certain things that they do. Amen? So adjustment. Adjustment. God wants us to learn how to adjust. Not just learn how to adjust, but he wants us to adjust to his plan. Huh? How many willing to adjust to God's plan right now? How many willing to open your mouth and tell Lord, I will adjust to your plan? Huh? Tell, tell him, that I know it ain't easy, it ain't easy at all, but let him know that you adjust to his plan, not to your plan, because your plan going to fail. But if you learn to adjust to the plan of God, then you're able to go forward with the power and anointing that God has in place for you. Yes. You're able to go forward with what God has in place for you. I don't know about you, but you should get tired of bouncing off the walls of God's perfect will in the permissive will. You've got to learn how to hug the walls of his perfect will. All right. You've got to learn how to hug it. You know, and, 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 and you'll learn how to hug it entails you being faithful to everything that God has for you. Yes. Being faithful what God has planted you. Oh, my, 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 my. Pastor, don't talk about it. Yeah, I will. Huh? 
Be faithful where God has planted you. It is time out for running after every single conference that comes up. Some conferences are great, but every time someone that you happen to be Facebook friends with puts out a conference, you skip your own church to go to their conference. Huh? You skip, matter of fact, you go and you not only skip your own church, you go over there and look, I'm going to pay my tithes to you this month. What? It happens. It happens. And, and all the while, guess what? The place that you're paying the tithe to may benefit. They may be blessed of the Lord. The place that you did pay the tithe to, that you should have paid it to, they're not hurting. They're blessed of the Lord. Huh? They're blessed of the Lord. My God, my God. But the person who's hurting is you. You're the person who's hurt. You're the person who's hurt. My God, my God. Huh? Let me go a step further. And then I'm going to stop. Lord, Lord, Lord will spank me if he needs to spank me. You don't worry about spanking me. Amen. A certain person was here in the ministry. And they claimed that they gave a whole bunch of money to the ministry. They, they claimed it. Truth be told, and I'm just going to say this for your, your knowing, they really did. They tied it to somewhere else totally and completely, and they told us that at the beginning. Amen. We won't leave it alone. Let us pray. And Father, we thank you right now for the adjustment that's taking place here at Interceding Christians. We ask right now, Lord God, that you would bless us, Lord God, to have an ear to hear your word and have a heart to want to serve you with our whole hearts. Father God, as we make these adjustments for you, Father God, we ask that, that we stay within your perfect will and that we hug the walls of your perfect will and not operate inside of the uncertain, permissive will that is there. Now, Father God, we ask further, Lord God, that every word that has come out of my mouth on this day be a blessed word, Lord God, and let it be truth to someone so that they'll know what the truth is and therefore the truth shall what? Set them free. Now we give you glory and praise for this in the matchless name of Jesus. Somebody said, thank God. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now clap your hands like God. Oh, you better even that.